Hey, I'm Jackie. I'm here with my friend Daniel from MSense. And we're here to kind of give you a pulse on where the slam landscape is at. Daniel. Yeah, thanks Jackie. Super excited to uh, be here with you today to uh, chat about uh, the slam market. And uh, as you know, it's really been uh, evolving a lot over the last few years. So if anybody's been following slam for the past year or two, there's so many options now. Where does Emerson sort of position itself in this landscape? The slam market has really uh, matured a lot over the years, right? Since we began uh, many years ago. Um, but we still feel Emerson uh, sits um, at the top of the pack, you know, as a premium offering in the slam space. And how does Emerson differentiate themselves to become a more premium product? Uh, well, that's uh, in a number of different ways. So uh, we have, uh, I feel, the most robust slam autonomy uh, on the market today. Um, our products are incredibly well designed, all IP65 rated. Um, we have uh, an incredible support team um, who uh, are there to assist our customers as they're adopting and taking on this new uh, technology that not all of them might have experience with. And plus, the amount of add-on modules, the car mount, the backpack mount, the pole mounts, the, the one that you like drop down, what do you call that one? Uh, like we have a cage for the dropping the down, cage yeah, vertical scan. So there's a lot of accessory that is supported with MSN. So when we see these other lower end SLAM solutions, it's typically just, hey, here's your SLAM LiDAR, off you go. And another piece to all of this is that the software portions is missing, where, you know, when you get a lower end SLAM, it, it will just essentially produce an LAS. But to most clients, so what, like I, I need more than an LAS. So um, in the Aura software, this will allow you to do a lot of the post-processing step that you would, would have to typically buy as a separate purchase to essentially complete your workflow from start to finish. A lot of the modules that we have developed over the years that our customers have been asking for are very targeted for their needs. Um, so, you know, you can automatically geo-reference using G GCPs. Uh, we have RTK uh, integration enabled. Um, colorization, change detection, uh, yeah, you name it. All of that is uh, built into Aura now for all of our uh, Emerson subscribers. And it seems like every quarter you guys are pushing out new updates for your existing customers, right? So not only on the hardware side, um, you're updating the hover map uh, on, from, a, from a software standpoint, but also Aura as well. So when you buy an Emerson product, you're, you're getting really quality support and you'll see that by just the amount of emails that you guys sent to me about different updates. Uh, we have a, a really incredible engineering team of product development specialists who have a long list of uh, new features, new products that we're working on uh, to ensure that our customers are supported for everything that they're doing now and everything that they could be doing in the future. Daniel, is it a great time to buy Slam? Yes, Jackie. I mean, it's a better time than ever to buy into Slam right now. Uh, the technology, uh, you know, as we've discussed, has really matured a lot over these last few years. Um, the accuracy has improved. The robustness of the point clouds is only uh, getting greater um, as, uh, you know, we continue to push the boundaries of what Slam can accomplish. Yeah. I mean, for most people, this is a big purchase for them, right? Um, and having a mature product and not an experimental product is a big factor to them. Back in two years ago, you know, these systems were producing like a precision of plus or minus five centimeters. Now they can go down to like 12 millimeters. Is that right? Actually, in certain environments, in closed environments, it's as accurate as plus or minus five millimeters. So now we're getting to kind of like the TLS scanner precision for these solutions. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's really kind of coming into that, uh, that zone of very survey grade uh, accuracy levels. Yeah. So it seems like precision is very important, but having a multi-purpose tool that can be used in different applications is also important, is that right? So one thing that makes the hover map uh, great is the fact that you can use it in so many different ways. Um, so of course, you know, as you know, you can mount it on a drone and complete those autonomous inspections, uh, but you're not just limited to that. So you can uh, take the hover map off, you can carry it by a handle, um, you can lower it into vertical openings in a cage. Um, you can put it on a pole to reach hard to access areas, um, mount it on a vehicle. You know, there's, there's so many options out there for uh, different ways that you can implement the hover map. So part of your purchasing decision is you, can just, you should consider, does my SLAM unit, can it be used in other scenarios as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know what's really great about it is that you can use it in these different, uh, you know, in these different ways and take the different point clouds that you've acquired and merge those together and to, to make one seamless uh, point cloud. It seems like there's so many different exciting use cases with a SLAM, it's particularly Emerson. Um, you've been with Emerson for quite some time. Do you have any fun stories that you're able to share where you know the end user is sort of pushing the edge and the boundary of SLAM? Okay, well, one interesting one that comes to mind is um, we had one uh, customer who was interested in actually finding uh, very fine dust particles that were floating in the air, right? So uh, normally the way that it would work is you use Aura to filter out all of that dust <laughs> that is acquired with the hover map, right? Uh, but this customer actually wanted to be able to see it so they could see how much dust is in the air, quantify it, and uh, ensure that the uh, environment was much more safe by removing that dust out of the air. So the, uh, the hover map SDX was actually uh, able to see all of this dust that was floating in the air that was not visible to the naked eye. Okay, next question. Is LiDAR X-ray? Uh, sadly, Jackie, no, it is not the same as X-rays. So LiDAR uses light, uh, beams of light emitted by um, a LiDAR sensor to measure the distance from the sensor to the object that it's detecting. Sadly, it cannot penetrate through objects. Uh, so you are limited by uh, how light can travel. So if there's a wall, you're not gonna see past that. Yeah, exactly right. Or can't you can't know, see through clothes. Yeah, that's right. You, you can't <laughs> see through people's clothes. Um, you know, you can't see into things like pipes, you know, and, and things of that nature. You have to be able to get on the inside of these right. uh, objects to detect what's uh, in there. Okay. Everybody's been asking for this. Can you use SLAM with photogrammetric models? Yeah, you absolutely can. I mean, uh, what you're getting from SLAM is a LiDAR point cloud, right? So you can integrate that with other sources of uh, information to create really detailed, really precise photogrammetric models. Yeah. One thing to know about this workflow, though, is that it's still not mature. That is where the industry is heading. But unfortunately, you can't use like Rally Capture take a slam point cloud and combine it with 3D models. Now, there are advanced users out there that have created their own separate workflows to create, to essentially combine those two uh, data sets together to make it work. We have a lot of experts within Emicent who can really help uh, anyone who's interested in the hover map and in slam technology develop those workflows. Yeah. I crash my hover map, what do I do now? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. That's kind of the worst case scenario, right? So the first thing you want to do is contact our support team so they can investigate the incident and find out what went wrong. You know, that's where we learn from our mistakes, right? Uh, and then second, you know, it's always helpful to have a backup unit where you can transfer your hover map license onto that backup unit and continue with your day-to-day -day operations. So you no longer need to buy a full system. You can just buy the hardware and transfer the license to save some money. Yeah, exactly. You can have that backup unit there. Uh, so in the, when the worst case uh, happens, uh, you're protected. I heard you guys mapped a prison. What was that about? Yeah, this was really interesting. So this is a very famous prison that everyone knows about. It was on Alcatraz Island. Call of Duty, Rebirth Island. Exactly, yeah. Play that game all the time, sorry. So same idea, yeah. I mean, you're, we created a 3D uh, digital twin of Alcatraz, which will be used in a lot of different interesting ways. Um, so uh, obviously for preserving the historic aspects of uh, the very famous uh, criminal detention center and um, uh, monitoring the condition of it and uh, you know inspecting it for any uh, maintenance that's necessary, any deterioration or erosion uh, to the, uh, the facility. So if Call of Duty is listening, they have a full complete model for you guys to replicate again. That's all the questions I have for today. Thank you so much, Daniel. If you guys have any questions, let us know. If you guys are interested in a hover map, let us know as well. Daniel and I will be on the call with you.